Scorning the cover of Jet Magazine in the summer of 1971 was a young woman from Ohio who would be a trailblazer for the racing industry, yet one who to this day never has really gotten the credit and recognition that she deserves for her accomplishments. The first to accomplish many things astride a thoroughbred, Thoroughfan takes a look back at the life and legacy of Cheryl White, the first black female jockey ever to get a jockey's license in the United States. Born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1953, Cheryl grew up pretty much on horseback after the family moved first to Chagrin Falls and then later to Rome, Ohio when she was in 8th grade. You could say that racing was born into her as her father Raymond was a successful thoroughbred trainer who started two horses in the Kentucky Derby and her mother was a thoroughbred horse owner whose many horses were trained by Raymond. They say Wayne Gretzky learned to skate before he could walk and Cheryl is often said to have learned to ride before she could walk. Her family often said she just had sort of a kinship with the horses and was able to connect with them on a level few are able to. She was a self-proclaimed track rat who could always be found hanging around her father's stables in the backside. She took her riding very seriously and learned a lot from her father, who, while not dissuading her pursuit of her love of riding completely, also did not feel at first that she should pursue a jockey's career. Not because he was concerned for her safety, but because at the time he felt that women really just didn't have a place at the racetrack or should be jockeys. Her trailblazing efforts were apparent even then as she helped start a girls basketball team at Grand Valley High School and was involved in almost anything there she could immerse herself with. Graduating in the top 10% of her class, she faced the ever proverbial fork in the road should she continue her studies of math and teaching at Bowling Green College, where she had a scholarship? Or should she pursue race riding full-time and get her jockey's license? A few years before Cheryl faced this decision, Kathy Kunzner won a Supreme Court battle that finally allowed female riders to compete in official paramutual races in the U.S. Unfortunately, she was injured before she could ride her first race, so it was Barbara Jo Rudin who broke through the gate, so to speak, for Kathy in being the first female to ride in a recognized race. Cheryl was not far behind these trailblazers and decided in her senior year to take race riding seriously and make it her sole focus with the goal of becoming a licensed jockey. Despite the naysayers and bigotry that was present at the time, on June 15, 1971, on a horse named Ace Reward at Thistledown Racetrack, Cheryl broke the color barrier for female jockeys in becoming the first black female jockey to ride in a recognized horse race. This was at a time as well when there were only about three recognized black jockeys in all of racing after their dominance in the late 1800s and early 20th century before being forced out of those jobs due to fear and ignorance of many following the Civil War and the Plessy versus Ferguson Supreme Court ruling of separate but equal. Cheryl finished last in that first race and last in her second race as well but it was enough to show the steward she could ride, and so she was granted her apprentice jockey's license, and those who watched her ride knew that much better results would be in her not-too-distant future. She was already a winner, though, to the entire black community for being the first black woman to get a jockey's license, and the media and public interest that was there for her first race at Thistledown was so great that her brother remembered it being almost impossible to even see the horse in the paddock there were so many people there to watch her ride. It didn't take too long for White to feel the thrill of victory in racing, as on September 2nd, 1971, she became the first black female jockey to win a thoroughbred horse race in America by piloting Jetalara to victory in the third race at Waterford Downs in West Virginia. In between that first race and her first win, Cheryl gained more fame and notoriety by being on the cover of Jet Magazine in July of 1971. That put her in some pretty impressive company, as others to grace the cover of Jet Magazine that year were Muhammad Ali, Sammy Davis Jr., Angela Davis, and John Conyers. She never let the stardom go to her head, though, and really was focused only on being the best rider she could be. 
more opportunities, more wins, and more recognition awaited White as she would travel to a lot of the local Midwestern and Eastern tracks to take advantage of riding opportunities as they presented themselves. People began to see how good of a jockey she really was as she routinely would compete against some of the best female riders in the country. One highlight of her career was being invited to, and winning, the 1972 Bows and Boots Handicap at Atlantic City Racecourse, a race that featured the top female jockeys in the country. Another career highlight came in those early years when she became the first female jockey to win two races on the same day in two different states. She won the last race at Thistledown and then hurried over to Waterford Park for their night program and won a race there as well. Never satisfied with her accomplishments, White always strived to want to be the big fish in the pond. Feeling that the female jockey colonies were already pretty established on most of the East Coast tracks, she decided to take her tack west to California and ply her trade there on the big Southern California tracks of Santa Anita, Hollywood Park, and Del Mar. She soon learned that it would be tougher to make inroads at these tracks than she thought. She blamed the culture of the time on those out there just not being open to wanting to use female jockeys. Not being dissuaded though, she moved her tack to the Northern Fair Circuit and immediately found a home not only with the thoroughbreds, but also with the quarter horses and Appaloosas that raced there. She was exceptionally good at breaking horses from the gate on top, and that was crucial in some of those races. She was the Appaloosa Horse Club's Jockey of the Year in 1977, 1983, 1984, and 1985, and was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2011. It was while at the Northern Fair Circuit she eclipsed another milestone on October 19, 1983, in becoming the first female jockey to win five races in one day at a major thoroughbred track sealing the deal with a win aboard Montford, a 10-year-old making his 100th start that day at the Fresno Fair. Riding very successfully through the rest of the 1980s, White dislocated a hip in 1989 and decided that it was time to consider retiring and to go out on top and on her terms. It just so happened that her last race on July 25, 1992 at Los Alamitos was a winning ride, allowing her to truly go out on top. Retiring from the saddle did not mean leaving the game though, as the track rat looked for where else she could be a part of racing, and decided to break another barrier in doing so. A year before her final ride, she passed the California Horse Racing Board Stewards examinations, and then was hired as the first female steward in California history in 1992. She spent many years as a steward, mostly on the Northern Fair circuit tracks, fulfilling various roles in her steward capacity. She eventually worked her way back to Ohio, where she was a placing judge at Mahong Valley Racecourse in 2019. Though retired from riding, Cheryl did take part in some charity events that put her back in the saddle, most notably being part of the Ladies Legends Race held at Pimlico from 2010 to 2014 on the day before the Preakness. That race featured retired female jockeys from all over the country, coming back to battle it out and raise a lot of money for various charities. Though never winning any of the races, Cheryl was always a big draw and made many a racing fan of those that came out to see her and cheer her on. Sadly, in May 2019, she suffered a heart attack that put her into a coma. Fighting for many months in that coma, she eventually succumbed and died in September of 2019. While Cheryl was recognized with many awards throughout her life, it is really kind of amazing to see that she has not been given the recognition she deserves from the racing industry itself. She was the first to do so many things and break down barriers for so many others in this sport, yet she has become mostly a forgotten person in this sport. The Kentucky Horse Park has a permanent exhibit about black horsemen of the turf that we hope highlights not only the horsemen, but the black horse women such as Cheryl as well. Cheryl's family has been working to set up both a permanent memorial to her as well as a foundation in her honor that would introduce underprivileged children to the amazing sport of horse racing. Thoroughfan is in the process of reaching out to the family to see what help we as fans can give to make this dream a reality, as it appears there still is a GoFundMe page set up accepting donations for it. Hopefully, the fans and the industry can help make this a reality to give someone who did so much for this sport the proper recognition she deserves. Despite breaking down so many barriers in racing, 
Cheryl's family felt she never truly understood the effect she had. Her brother said, Cheryl was never a great self-promoter and wasn't concerned with the politics of racing. She just did her thing. She didn't understand what she had accomplished. I don't know that she understood her significance or place in history. In doing some research for this piece, I came across this quote by reporter Peter Monaco that I feel really sums her life up the best. Cheryl White was a true pioneer in our sport, and one could only imagine the hurdles she overcame to pursue her career. She was young and determined, ignored the drama and the bigots, and just put her head down and rode. She paved the way for countless people to pursue their own dreams, both on and off the racetrack. It's truly fitting that Cheryl White went out a winner in her last race, as she's surely a winner in my book.